Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, warshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is C Raptor, and today, guys, let's tackle something new. We've been doing some learn to play video series focused on both the American Destroyer and the German cruiser lines. Today, we're going to have a start. Uh, start the series. We're going to have a look at the American heavy cruisers. This is a line of ships that, frankly, I slept on for a very long time. So. One of the things that I'm trying to convey to newer players is even for somebody like me, a veteran with thousands of games, sometimes ships don't click right away. And sometimes a line of ships that you dismiss as crap or not for you or you just don't like it or just... Man, every now and then you should go back and challenge those assumptions because that's what happened to me with the American Heavy Cruiser line. When the game first released, of course, we had the Japanese, the Americans... I played the Japanese cruisers. I really enjoyed them. Zao was actually my first tier 10 ship I unlocked in World of Warships, and I ignored the American heavies for years. In fact, it wasn't until after the American uh, cruiser reorganization, which I think was like the summer uh, like 2018, I think, maybe 2019, something along those lines where they broke the line up into heavy and light and did a complete reorganization that I seriously went back and paid attention to these ships and discovered what I'd been missing. And so, let's get into... What I discovered, and hopefully you can discover along the way, and we'll talk uh, We'll talk more about that as we go. So we're going to start off here, of course, with Tier 6's USS Pensacola. Pensacola has, well, Pensacola has a reputation in World of Warships, right? Because for a long time, before the aforementioned line reorganization I was talking about that happened way back in patch something or other, I'll figure it out and put it in the comments, you can go read the patch notes, but Pensacola was the old Tier 7 American heavy cruiser. Pensacola, honestly, was a very, very, very bad match for Tier 7. And I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. It was a terrible ship in that tier. But with very minimal changes to this ship, dropping it a tier has given it brand new life in my eyes. This is a fabulous Tier 6 heavy cruiser. She's a lot of fun to play but she is radically different from the ship before her, right? If you're playing up the American cruiser line, you've been playing the likes of Phoenix and Omaha, and then suddenly you get to tier, you get to tier six and you're presented with a choice. Do you want to continue on up tier six with USS Dallas? And we'll come back to the American lights in a different video. Or do you want to branch out and try your hand at heavy cruiser over here with USS Pensacola? And Pensacola is a very different animal. For starters, Heavy cruisers are not that common in the middle tiers, right? I think there's only a handful of them at tier five. I think Furutaka and maybe uh, whatever the British one is, I can't think of it right now, are probably the only two tech tree heavy cruisers at tier five. Pensacola is one of only still a handful of true heavy cruisers here at tier six. What do I mean when I say heavy cruiser? Main battery. Main battery size. The various naval treaties of the era defined a light cruiser as a ship that was armed with 6-inch caliber guns or below, and a, ca a cruiser that was armed with 8-inch caliber guns or higher was considered a heavy cruiser. And that's what you see here, USS Pensacola coming in with a 203mm or 8-inch main battery. Now, in World of Warships, and I've talked about this in the German cruiser line, but in case you haven't watched those videos, I'll hit it again. Heavy cruiser is a very different play style from light cruiser. For starters, you're simply not as good at hunting and murdering destroyers. You can, you're more than capable of it, but you're not as good at it as a light cruiser. You lack that rate of fire. So what are you good at? Well, you're really good at deleting opposing cruisers of almost all sizes and shapes, really, because you have fairly good guns more than capable of penetrating most cruiser armor profiles that fire generally two or three times as quickly as battleship caliber guns. Um, but you're also really good at anti-aircraft support. And this is something we're going to talk more about in the American line. But but the bottom line is, is that you generally have more deck space, more hull space, more tonnage. You can devote to anti-aircraft firepower. And so a typical heavy cruiser has pretty solid anti-aircraft firepower. So let's talk about Pensacola here. We're going to spend a little bit of time going through her vitals. We're going to spend a little bit of time comparing her to some of her contemporaries. There are not many, but we're going to mention them along the way so you understand what you're up against. And then we're going to go show you a little bit of gameplay. Okay? So, starting as we do with survivability, USS Pensacola here, 32, roughly 32 and a half thousand hit points. This is not best in tier. It's not worst in tier. And when I say in tier, I'm comparing her to other 
heavy cruisers. I am not looking at light cruisers, okay? So I'm looking at explicitly, right now, I'll just give you a handful. I'm looking at Japanese cruiser Alba. Um, Brits have Devonshire. The Italians have Trento. There are a couple of premiums in this tier. I'm looking at you, Canar uh, Canarias and London, okay? There are not many tier six heavy cruisers. Pensacola is one of them. And this, this health pool is respectable. Um, generally, most of the heavy cruisers in this tier come in around 35,000 hit points. 34 plus, right at up to 35 for Canarias. So you're a little on the low side, maybe, you know, 10%. But it's not so much that it's going gonna, it's gonna to really radically uh, screw you up in my mind. Torpedo protection, 4%. <laughs> Don't get hit by torpedoes. I said this all throughout the German cruiser videos. I'm going to keep saying it here. Don't get hit by torpedoes. This ship cannot shrug them off. Cruisers are exceptionally vulnerable to torpedoes, almost universally, regardless of light or heavy. And it's one of the things that makes that destroyer hunting role that they're quote-unquote known for very, very, very uh, dicey, let's say. Armor layout. All right. Now we have to talk about two major things with armor. All right. And I hit it in the German cruiser videos. We talked about it when we got to York at tier seven. We're going to talk about it here because we're starting a tier earlier, but you have to understand bow armor and overmatch thresholds. We're going to get to that in just a sec. For, moment, for the moment, let's look at her belt armor, which is a whopping 76 millimeters over the Citadel. Hilariously, She's got this 102 millimeter strake up forward, which ultimately feels weird. But um, the short version is that Pensacola's Citadel, and I'll just pull everything back and show you just the Citadel, is very large. And between basically her after superstructure and her forward turret is very, very exposed. Pensacola has a reputation. Did you remember me saying that earlier? Pensacola has a reputation in World of Warships. Battleship players love shooting at this thing. It pops like a balloon. If you go broadside to an opposing battleship at the wrong time or he catches you at long range or something, you will simply explode. Uh, and it's 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 common. It's it's a meme. It's you know like the obligatory exploding Nuremberg meme. That meme also applies to Pensacola, and it has everything to do with this Citadel. The size of it, it does sit above the waterline here through the midsection underneath the, the, the stacks. And then, of course... Only 76 millimeters of arm, three inches of armor right here through the heart of the ship. They actually managed to give you four inches up here over the forward magazines. And the after magazines are at least buried a little bit within the hull of the ship. So I guess they figure, ah, you know, it's not so bad back there. But man, um, yeah, this, this ship has an armor layout, but uh, you can't put a lot of stock into it. Now, what do we want to talk about? We want to talk about bow armor. This is critical for understanding the American heavy cruiser lines. I'm going to hit it here. I'm going to hit it on pretty much every one, every ship that we talk about between now and the end of the line. 25 millimeters of bow armor means that you cannot be overmatched by certain calibers of battleship guns. That's not to say that a battleship won't slap you around. Chances are he will. We've just taken a look at your... Your um, you know, uh, your belt armor. It's not amazing. The super, sorry, the the um, um, casemate armor here, twenty five millimeters. Not much better, right? You will probably eat full and over pens all day long. However, there are certain engagements you will find yourself in, particularly against middle tier battleships, where this twenty five millimeter bow can be a bit of a lifesaver. Okay. So, mathematically, what does this work out to? It means that a 25 millimeter bow, like you see here on Pensacola, will, if you angle it correctly, bounce up to 14 inch shells. They will not be able to straight overmatch the bow of this ship. In other words, pretend this armor isn't here. That's what the overmatch, that's when you say overmatch, that's what it means. It means that the shell treats the armor like it doesn't exist. In this instance, Shells 14 inches or smaller cannot do that. They will respect this plate. They will see it and go, oh, that's armor. And because chances are, that it depend, again, it depends on the angle the shell is coming in at, but we'll talk about ricochet angles again in a minute. But as long as, long as the ricochet angles generate a bounce, you will bounce 14 inch shells and below off this bow armor. Now, does that make you invulnerable to an opposing battleship? No. His secondaries will chew you up at certain ranges. Certainly, um he will still be able to pin your superstructure. And of course, once he gets enough of an angle on your side, he'll be able to overpin or even potentially full pin um, your, your Citadel and or your casemate armor here, okay? But it does mean that you have somewhat increased survivability in certain situations against certain targets 
by presenting them not just the narrow profile of the ship and giving them less to hit, but your bow armor will more reliably shrug off those shells, all right? And you'll see some examples of that in the gameplay that I've got coming on later. So that's important for 14 inches, and that is the, the overwhelming majority of the battleships you're probably going to run into in your matchmaking bracket here at Tier 6. I say overwhelming majority, that's not true. Many of the battleships of the tier you are in, such as the American Tier 6 battleship, USS New Mexico, is 14-inch guns, okay? However, when you start seeing Tier 7, and certainly by the time you start seeing Tier 8 opponents, they will punch through this bow as if it were Swiss cheese. So, you can't rely on it. You have to learn what your opponent, what the caliber of the battleship guns you're up against, and when you can and can't use that little trick to try and buy you some time and save your life, okay? All right. What else we got going on? Uh, we talked about armor, we talked about survivability. Let's talk about maneuverability and concealment. 34 knots, that's with the speed flag. I believe the base speed is around 32 and change. It's probably 32 and a half. That's pretty respectable for the tier. Let's have a peek here. Uh, survey says 32 point, yeah, 32 and a half. So um, it's a little on the slow side. It's not the slowest battleship at tier six. I'm sorry, battleship. Not the slowest heavy cruiser at tier six. Of course, the Brits still run away with that category. They're very much not known for their speed. And then at the other opposite end, 35 knots, of course, is Alba. So you're kind of on the low end. It's not what you're good at, but you've got enough speed to stay away from many, again, many of the middle tier battleships. It's not until you start seeing tier seven and certainly tier eight battleship opponents that you're up against people that can reliably run you down. 12 and, oh, sorry, 620 on the turning circle, 7 seconds on the rudder shift. One of the things you're going to learn about Pensacola is how well she handles. That turning circle is amazing. It is best in tier, by the way, for all the heavy cruisers at this tier. Nobody turns tighter than Pensacola, and nobody's, uh, I won't say nobody, but very few ships have a rudder this responsive. About the only other ship you can, comp you can kind of compare to this is Trento. If you have a Trento, Pensacola and Trento handle very similarly due to how their rudder shift and turning circles works. So, yeah, and Trento's Italian, and Italian ships handle pretty well. Pensacola handles like an Italian ship. Like, she really does. This ship can wiggle and turn, and she's very responsive on the rudder. It's one of the big strengths that she has, and you will have to use it to get the maximum amount of this ship, so keep that in mind. Full detection, uh, full stealth build you see there, 12.4 kilometers. That is absolutely terrible. <laughs> But it shouldn't shock you because, again, heavy cruiser. There are plenty of other heavy cruisers in this tier. Well, basically almost every other heavy cruiser in this tier with better detection than you. Pensacola, like some other ships that we've discussed in previous Learn to Play videos, suffer from, suffers from the dual whammy of low, uh, kind of weakish armor scheme and bad detection. What does that mean? That means when you play this ship, you have to move up very slowly and very cautiously and I said it a million times, and I'll probably repeat myself a few more times here. Uh, I said it in the German videos. I'll say it again here. You're playing for the late game, right? When you play a heavy cruiser, you're almost always playing for the late game. So you don't want to get deleted early, right? Don't be that cruiser player that runs up and gets smashed and dies in the first few minutes. Main battery. Okay, there's a lot to unpack here, and I'm going to hit some basic concepts that we're going to reiterate again as we go up the American cruiser line. Because one of the things you're going to notice about American heavy cruisers, they do not have torpedoes, right? There are no torpedoes on this ship, no torpedo tubes. Amongst all of the heavy cruisers in the game, the Americans are fairly unique in basically almost, I think there's maybe a handful, maybe one or two that have torpedoes. Essentially, none of them have torpedoes. They are all gun cruisers. That means... Every, you live and die by this main battery. You have got to get it to perform, and so you have to understand what it does well and what it doesn't do well. So let's start off by talking about what you've got. Well, I've got 10 barrels of American 203-millimeter guns. I've got, a, I've got t uh, five barrels up forward, a double and a triple, and then I've got five barrels back aft, a double and a triple. So 10 barrels all told. Nice, solid number. On a 15-second reload, that is really bad. 15.7 kilometer range is pretty typical for heavy cruisers of this tier. You're not looking at anything unusual there. Dispersion is pretty solid. One of the downsides. Well, one of the downsides of this, these turrets is the turret traverse. You see there are 34 seconds. That is like battleship traverse. It is terrible. And I'll be honest, that is buffed. That is buffed. The base turret traverse of these turrets is 45 seconds. So remember we talking about how well Pensacola handles? Her turrets cannot keep up. This ship will routinely outturn 
her turrets. And it's something that you have to just, you have to learn to live with, guys. You have to play around it. And there are going to be times you're going to have to resist the urge to stop a turn to let your turrets come into alignment to get a salvo off. Because if you do, you're showing the enemy something, a vulnerable, a vulnerable part of your ship by not completing that turn. You always want to be prioritizing survivability over DPS. Your survival matters more than that next salvo out of your guns in like in most cases. So prioritize that and and always try to complete the turn to, to, get to show your enemy the worst shot possible. But just remember, you will outturn your turrets constantly. Other than that, the guns are pretty good. You have solid little HE shells. You see they're 2,800 damage. That's not best in tier, um, not by a long shot. In fact, actually, technically, it's worst in tier. But because you're throwing so many, you have a larger throw weight more, no other heavy cruiser at this tier throws this many shells, okay? You will see good results. And then, of course, your um, uh, your uh, armor-piercing shells there start with a 4,600 base. I do have the uh, armor-piercing skill there on the captain. That's why you see the 4,830. Now, why did I do that? I'll tell you why. American armor-piercing shells in these heavy cruisers are what you want to be firing every opportunity you get. This is something you need to start learning at tier six. You have to learn this lesson at six and seven, because by the time you get to tier eight, it will save your game. It will save your life. It will make the difference between a good game and a bad game. When you drive an American heavy cruiser, you want to be firing armor piercing at every opportunity. A, the shells themselves are pretty solid. They're not quite best in tier in terms of damage, but they're not far off the mark. But they have improved ricochet angles what the hell does that mean raptor all right let's go back to some basic world of warships mechanics for a minute this might be something that you're not familiar with but i'm going to put a wiki link in here and you'll be able to go look at it later i'm gonna put a graphic up on the screen so you can see what i'm talking about all right so at the top of this graphic is imagine the hull of the ship i'm looking top down on the hull of the ship these these colored lines coming in represent shells coming in on the target. Right now, I want you to ignore the right half of the graph. I want you to look at the left half. That yellow line on the left half where it says 45 degrees, that is basically every other nation's AP shell. If, you, if that shell strikes an opposing armor plate at 45 degrees or less, it will penetrate. The game doesn't run a calculation. It just says, congratulations, you struck this armor at 42.7 degrees. You have penetrated. Here is your full penetration damage for that shell. Period. End of discussion. Simple calculation. Okay. To the left of that, you'll see a red line that says 60 degrees. All right. In between 45 and 60 degrees, the game will run a calculation that will determine if that shell penetrates or not. In other words, in that window, in that between 45 and 60 degrees, the shell has a chance to penetrate. All right. And as you get closer to 60, uh, that chance is higher. As you get closer to 45, that chance, uh, sorry, that chance is lower, lower chance to penetrate. As you get closer to 45, the chance is higher to penetrate, as you would expect. So it falls off on a curve. Past 60 degrees, anything past 60 degrees, the shell is an auto bounce. Period. End of discussion. It will not penetrate. Okay, it will automatically ricochet. When you see those little ricochet, um, you know, ribbons come up in your right hand display after firing AP, that's what happened. The game ran that check. That shell hit at greater, whatever it struck, it struck it at greater than 60 degrees. Bam, that's a ricochet. Now, why are the Americans different? Look at the right half of the graph. Okay, that right hand side shows the angles that American heavy cruiser armor piercing rounds use. They don't start making bounce checks until 60 degrees. So at a point when every other nation's armor piercing rounds will automatically bounce, that's when the Americans start bouncing. You have a significantly wider window, right? If you I mean literally a 33% larger window than any other any other nation to get your armor piercing shells to fuse and penetrate opposing targets. Now, why does this matter? Well, for starters, AP rounds tend to do more damage um, than HE ones, right? Uh, period. And just, you know, they can't light fires, but you're going to get more damage out of them. But also, if you're trying to land those ever-important citadels, that's where this comes from, right? So when you're facing an American heavy cruiser, you have to remember that he, you know, when you're turning and you're fighting him, he needs less of an angle than most to penetrate you, right? 
And when you're driving an American cruiser, you want to be firing armor piercing at every opportunity that you realistically think you can get those shells to penetrate. And this graph is why. That red line on the right, that's 67 and a half degrees, that's when American shells start making that auto, basically past that they'll auto ricochet. So they have a very narrow window where they have a chance to penetrate and a very, very large window where they will penetrate. And so when you hear people use the term American piercing, coined by, I believe, fellow YouTuber Euro, yes, that is where this comes from. And so that is the value of these, that is the why these, these, these all-gun cruisers are so competitive and so good, still in the game, all these years later, right? World of Warships now over eight years old, one of the original cruiser lines in the game, still among the best out there. All right, enough main battery. Let's hit a couple things and we'll show you some gameplay. Uh, you do have access to a uh, PBY Catalina here, depth strike, uh, depth charge strike for dealing with submarines. They're so much fun. They're a great addition to the game. Enjoy that. Um, and then we have a defense. All right, now down here at tier six, I'm gonna sing a very different tune. You're gonna hear me start singing at tier eight. So down here at tier six, let's let's talk mediocre because um, Pensacola's AA bubble is pretty mediocre. Damage wise. It's not bad, really. 81 in the outer ring, nearly 200 DPS in the middle ring, and then, of course, 150 here in the inner ring on the back of those 20 middle Orlicons. That sounds pretty good, and in truth, it's not too shabby. It's not best in tier, not by a long shot, but it's not crap either. Why does it feel bad? It feels bad because of the range. You see there, the maximum range AA bubble, 4.8 kilometers. Now, that's not worse in tier because the Italians exist, but it's basically worse than every other heavy cruiser uh, in tier six. And New Orleans up at tier seven suffers from the same problem. So you're going to hear me say this at least once again. Um, I like building my American heavy cruisers for anti-aircraft fire. I do not do that with USS Pensacola. This AA is okay. It's sufficient to frustrate and irritate opposing Ryujos and Rangers and Furiouses and that, that sort of thing. But if you're up against a tier 8 carrier, you're not going to do much more than maybe maybe make him go, oh, that's cute, right? So it feels kind of bad when you're when you're up-tiered against a carrier. This AA suite is not great. Um, if it's an even-tiered carrier, uh, if you're looking at a tier 6 carrier, it's sufficient for you. But the range is not really there for you to do much, to project much anti-aircraft power elsewhere on the map. Let's have a quick look at equipment and consumables. Um... Main armaments modification one is going to be my go-to for almost all heavy cruisers. I am running the defensive fire modification here. Um, this is debatable, guys. Uh, I honestly am I'm starting to question this choice at tier six. Not because I'm seeing, not because I don't see a lot of carriers. I do, but because the defensive fire base is so. I mean, the the a the a of the ship is so mediocre to begin with. This helps. But is it really worth it? I don't know. At the moment, that's how I have this ship built. I could very easily think, see myself doing something like this, right? And picking up the Hydro. Um, turret Traverse. This is what you want in slot two. Don't try anything else, right? Your other options. Don't take the AA Guns mod. Aiming Systems. Mm, I, like, you really want this. You really want this. But on Pensacola, you basically can't. You basically are forced into this Turret Traverse one, and I hate it. Now, I'll say this. If you feel like you can manage the turret traverse and are you just willing to suffer, take aiming systems. Do not look at the other stuff. All right, so I'll leave this one up to you. But it's either main battery mod two or aiming systems one. Don't take anything else. Um, down here at the slot four, you have a couple of options, actually. Steering gears is, in my mind, overkill for this ship. She already handles fabulously. She doesn't need the help. But if you really want it, go for it. I like propulsion mod. I find myself juggling my throttle very commonly in American American cruisers. So I like this mod. This is what I play. Um, if you want to burn and flood less, this is okay. It's not great for cruisers. Most of the time, you're going to push that DCP button. Um, the airstrike mod is not terrible, although admittedly, you only have the one plane, like you only have the one airstrike, but it does reduce the cooldown of it. So that's got some that's got some benefit to it. So I could see this being a pick as well if you really, really hate submarines and you find yourself in games with them all the time. We talked briefly already about the choice between defensive fire and AA. Again, at this tier, I, I mean, I've got this one built for defensive fire. That's pretty questionable. If you build this for hydro, I think you're going to be just fine. I really don't know that I can recommend defensive fire. You're stuck with the fighter, which feels bad because fighters are terrible, but it is what it is. Um, last but not least, signals. I mean, I run this as my standard slate of signals that I like to run on American American ships. I don't want to blow up. I want to pump pump the fire chance. The flood chance you get here out of the Victor Lima is irrelevant, but you're getting a lot more fire chance out of your shells. Uh, I want all the AA that I can get. 
Sierra Bravo, of course, no matter what consumable buy put in that slot in slot two there, whether it's defensive fire or hydroacoustic search, Sierra Bravo gives me some benefit to it. I'm taking November Foxtrot for similar reasons. And of course, Sierra Mike to get every little bit of speed that I can. Captain skills. I only have a 16 point captain, but let's talk about some basics that you're probably going to want in just about every one of these American heavy cruiser builds. For starters, you're going to want gun feeder. In my mind, you always want gun feeder in a heavy cruiser. This is an invaluable skill, especially in a ship like this, where you're going to be changing ammo types regularly. This is amazing. Okay. For Pensacola, Grease the Gears is almost a must have. And for one point, it's very affordable. I, I, I just, you have to have this, take it. Okay. Um, Tier two, I would recommend priority target. You see here, I've taken focus fire training. Again, that's debatable. Again, it reduces my airstrike armament, my little my little submarine depth charge thing. Uh, it does make my AA just a hair better, but is it worth it? I don't know. Again, you know, I've talked about kind of how mediocre the A is. I'll leave this one up to you. If you don't pick this skill, you're not going to break my heart. You're not going to be losing much. You definitely want to drill and rush because sooner or later you're going to take big damage and you want your guns to, 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 to speak back quicker when that happens. And on all the American cruisers, I love to take this heavy AP shell skill because it's literally just a damage buff to a shell type that I want to be using every, every, every opportunity I get. And of course, I'm going to take concealment. My concealment is bad I can't, I'm going to try and fix whatever I can out of it. Now, that's a 16-point captain. If you're looking for some other skills past this, let's say you've got a, a captain that's 19 or 20 or even 21 points. Again, Demolition Expert is an excellent skill. This pairs nicely with the flags we looked at earlier. Gives you more fire chance on the shells. I would not take heavy HE. Um, again, if the HE is good, but you really want to be focused on the AP. I wouldn't take Superintendent. Doesn't get you a whole lot. Survivability expert is okay. There's an argument to be made. It's not amazing. Um, top grade gunner is one that I think mm, I could see it. I could see it on this ship because your 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 concealment is so high, twelve and a half kilometers. There's probably going to be some pretty pretty. You probably get some good use out of this skill, right? Are you going to get big use out of the secondaries? No, but that little bit of eight percent main battery reload, um, you'll probably keep, keep keep that turned on much of the time. I would not take IFHE. It's not worth it. Uh, I don't think radio location is worth it for the ship. It's not a good skill. Um, outnumbered. I mean, maybe, maybe, but that's up to you. In my mind, if I have to choose between out between outnumbered and top grade gunner, I'm almost always going to choose top grade gunner. But if you like outnumbered, hey, you do you. Last on the right here, we have a defense expert. Again, the range to me gimps this ship so badly. I would not recommend this skill. You could also reach down and grab consumable specialist. This is not a bad one or possibly even last stand. Um, I would not pick up incoming fire alert. That's me, but some people swear by this skill. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, there's a quick look around Pensacola. I think we've kind of covered the hype highlights. Let's go look at some gameplay, and we'll come back here for some wrap-up in a minute. All right. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the north spawn here of Fault Line. Let's take a look at USS Pensacola in action. I am top tier. This is strictly a tier 5-6 game, so this is exactly the kind of game that Pensacola has the opportunity to shine in. What am I looking to shoot at? Well, for starters, I'm really looking to shoot at opposing cruisers, and matchmaking has gifted me with some beauties, right? Look at that. All opposing light cruisers, four possible really good targets for my big, my big fat American piercing 8-inch shells, so I'll be excited to see if I can run into one of those guys. What other kinds of things can I be shooting at? Well, as a heavy cruiser, of course, I am looking for the opportunity to light fires on battleships um, and the opportunity to slap around destroyers. But of course, there's only three destroyers plus the sub. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. Honestly, I can't spot those guys. And um, yeah, I'm going to be relying on my teammates to, to help pick them up. And then maybe I can get some shells downrange. Now, you heard me talk about, we were just talking about consumables. You'll see here that I have defensive fire equipped. This is a, a deficiency in how I've been playing Pensacola that I have since remedied. And you're going to see over the course of this game, you're going to shake your head and go, oh, Raptor, if only you'd had Hydro. If only you'd had Hydro. Okay, so the, the lesson that I learned in this game and the lesson I want you to learn, especially here at Tier 6, take Hydro in Pensacola. Your AA is not worth investing serious points in. And unless you're going to be did with a carrier, take the Hydro. Now, 
As we start off here, we're, we're kind of hanging out with the team here over here along the 9-10 line. I've got a, an early shot at this Dallas, but if you see right there, even right there, I'm already overturning the turrets. You will do this all the time. But I had AP in the barrel, and I was uh, rewarded for that endeavor. When you are playing an American heavy cruiser, and I'll say this again over the course of these videos, AP is going to be your default, right? Most of the time when you start a heavy cruiser at the beginning of the game, you're going to load HE. You don't want to do that with the Americans, not in my opinion. You want to keep AP in the barrel, and you want to hold your fire until somebody makes a mistake or gives you a shot that you can maximize or potentially maximize the use of that armor piercing. So start off with AP in the barrel, be looking for the chance to surprise somebody. If it doesn't show up, if it's not going to happen, the game's just not materializing the right way, hey, swap to the HE and get, get going, right? But in the early, those opening two to three minutes, you're, you're trying to look for the opportunity to punish somebody for a mistake. You see here, I've already swapped back to the HE. They know I'm here. I'm trying to get some more damage on this Dallas. It's not going to happen. Now, I've already made a bit of an error here. I've, I'm, I'm deadheading straight into this island. I'm actually trying to get to a little bit of cover here from this opposing battleship. I'm, I'm really hoping that I can break line of sight, and I managed to. I'm going to get my stern turrets on him here in a moment. That's the Cavour. But, of course, the bow turrets go into the island. But what's really caught my eye, have a look at the minimap, look at the 8-line. There are two light cruisers standing in that gap over here. Um, this would normally be the sea cap on a domination game, but those light cruisers are very, very close. And one of them, ladies and gentlemen, you can't see it, but I'm licking my chops. One of them is an Omaha. Now, when you drive heavy cruisers in the middle tiers for Utaka, Alba, Pensacola, you learn to love to look for Omahas because they are basically giant floating Citadel factories. And most Omaha players don't have the first clue what's happening to them when you open up on them with heavy cruiser AP. Most of them have never run into a heavy cruiser before. This particular chap, well, yep, yep. He suffers this problem. Now, I make two mistakes with that first salvo. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause here to point them out. One is, I didn't wait for the stern turrets to clear the headland, so I lost five shells right off the bat. I only got half the salvo into the hull. And the second is, I overled him. Most of those were overpens up forward. You have to remember when you're shooting an Omaha, his citadel is a little farther aft, a little farther to the stern, back under the stacks. And you can see there, see where those shell hits are in his hull? Too far forward. So now I'm intentionally shorting the salvo a little bit to put them right under his stacks. Ah, and I'm re well rewarded with four citadels. This dude's game is basically over. The next time I pull the trigger, I ought to be able to wipe him out. Let's see if we can make it happen. He speeds up. He starts to turn out. I lead him just a little bit, but it's not enough. One Citadel's all, it need, all I need, and there we go. Now, his buddy Leander is coming back for more, and this is an engagement that I am excited about because while Leander is better armored than Omaha, well, let's be honest, most things are better armored than Omaha, Leander is still also, if she's not angled, um, food for my guns. This guy... Cleverly, though, he's paying attention. He reacts very quickly, gets his bow into me. I'm going to get a few full pins here. He's going to take a notable chunk of damage. But you have to remember that Leander has a heal. These British, these British lights get heals, and so they're able to recover some of that full pin damage. You really, really want the big citadels on them. A whole bunch of full pins generally won't cut it. He's going to stop and pop his smoke. I'm going to get one more salvo down range. Look at that beautiful dispersion. Three more full pins for 5k. Not enough to kill him, but he knows he's been in a fight. So now I'm in a bit of a pickle, right? We're down a ship. This flank is, I won't say my flank is doing amazing things, but we're, in, we're okay. But there is uh, a Cesare over there, a friendly Cesare over there. Uh, the opposing Congo is in the gap with him. I'm betting he doesn't survive that encounter. There's also a submarine underneath the hull of that Cesare. And I really need this Leander gone. So I'm going to do something that I wouldn't ordinarily do in a Pensacola. And I'm going to push up in this guy's face. Now, this is one of several instances you're going to see over the next few minutes. We're going to go, oh, Raptor, I wish you'd had Hydro. Yeah, me too. Me too. So, again, lesson learned. Don't be Raptor. Play Hydro on your Pensacola unless you know you're going to be diving with a carrier player or something. Okay, if you're going to div with a carrier, there's an argument to be made for defensive fire. But 
Submarines, particular tier six submarines, are so prevalent these days, I really do feel like the Hydro is not a terrible investment. Now, I'm racing time here. If you look at the minimap, the Congo is going to clear this headland on my left in a minute and, and have eyes on me. One of the things that I'm banking on, I'm going to pause here to talk about this. One of the things that I'm banking on is that this Leander has blinded himself. This is something, this is a concept a lot of new players forget about when they when they get excited about smoke, right? They forget that, hey, look, if I smoke, I generally can't see out of my own smoke. I'm relying on my teammates to spot for me. Right now, that Leander is sitting in a smoke cloud with nobody spotting for him. And that's about to change. This Congo is going to pick me up in just a moment. But I'm racing south, trying to keep this island in between me and this Congo so this Leander doesn't, doesn't know that I'm here, doesn't know that I'm doubling back, and unfortunately, I fail. So this Leander, if he's paying attention, he knows I'm here now, and of course his buddy the Cavour out in the middle of the map also will be able to pick me up in just a moment because, well, I'm spotted from orbit, right? Remember 12 and a half detection? And um, yeah, right about there or so, there it is. So now there's no hiding from anything. And sure enough, the Leander is right here in front of me. He's actually reversed out just a little bit. His smoke is right there. Cavour comes in with a salvo, dings me a little bit, but the SAP is will hurt me, but that was not certainly a catastrophic salvo. All right, so let's talk about this engagement with the Leander. Now, I'm obviously, you can, you're going to see it here. I'm struggling with the turret traverse. I'm trying to get all my turrets um, on the target while turning. I also know he has torpedoes. He's got a triple launcher on that starboard side. I have to expect that they're coming. And again, Rapt this is was Raptor, if only you'd had the Hydro. I intentionally short the salvo, trying to repeat the trick with the Omaha. Don't quite make it. Nine overpens, ladies and gentlemen. Feels terrible. But I do have the help of a friendly Perth. This guy is not going to make it. I'm trying to get my guns to reload here. There's the torpedo I was expecting. The Perth goes out. But what I should have done right there, what I should have done right there is cut my throttle as I turned in, and I didn't. I took a full speed turn, and I slid right into that torpedo. Now, that torpedo has pretty much ruined my game. Now, I'm still going to have a good game, but look, I w there went half my HP, right? And so now I have... Now let's talk about my next tactical problem. All right. Here I am, a 7,000 health cruiser, nose-to-nose -nose with a 30,000 hit point Conte di Cavour here in the middle of the map. And it's mano a mano. There's nobody else that's going to make a significant contribution to this fight. How do I win this? Well, let's go back to what we were talking about earlier. If you remember, Pensacola's bow armor is capable of ricocheting at least some of the shells that Conte di Cavour will throw at her. Why? They're not greater than 14 inches in diameter. If I remember correctly, Cavour's guns are 13 and a half. So I have that going for me. The other thing is this player seems oblivious to what my armor-piercing rounds are Much capable better. of. Observe. Now, you're going to miss the res damage results of this salvo, but I'm going to put 10 shells downrange right there. I'm going to turn the camera away, but that was an 8K salvo, and I can do that every about 12, 12 to 13 seconds right now. His guns reload on about a 26 or 27 seconds. So I can get two salvos downrange for every one. I have to time this very carefully. So his salvo's coming in. I'm going to turn. You're going to see Pensacola's maneuverability there. I dodge every single shell. He takes 9K in return. So at the moment, in our little engagement here, I've shaved off more than half of his surviving, his remaining hit points, and he's done nothing back to me. Let's keep going. My guns are going to reload. He's just fired, so I know I need to get, I need to try and get, um, by the time my next salvo, not this salvo, but the salvo after this one comes up, I'm going to be turning again. So I'm going to get this salvo down range. This one, as I recall, is not quite as good. Yeah, only about 5k out of that one. Feels bad. But I know almost immediately as soon as I get this next salvo down range, I'm going to have to turn, get the guns out, hit the rudder. Here it comes. And... Bam. Okay. Again, I lose about 1,200 HP or so. Nothing catastrophic. And now we're close enough. In a moment, his secondaries are going to open up. So I've made a bit of an error here. Okay. I'm using my speed and maneuverability to dodge salvos, but by doing so, I've entered his secondary envelope. Now I have a problem. His secondaries will full pen my superstructure and full pen me in lots of places. That's free damage if those shells land. I shouldn't be, I don't want to give that to him, but here I am. So now. I need to kill him before his guns reload. So I'm going to pull this salvo back in terms of lead just a little bit. I'm going to short it. There we go. Four more K. I'm actually getting a little bit of help from the Perth here. The Dallas off to my stern's trying to get involved. But I say, no, sir. I need to get this, him dead right here before his guns reload. And we pull it off. 
So that's a great example of what you're able to do against battleships that disrespect your guns. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm really harping on this with the American heavy cruisers because you have no other options, right? But I'll be honest, any most, most heavy cruisers with armor-piercing rounds can do that to opposing battleships. The Germans can certainly do it. The Japanese can certainly do it. Um, the difference is the Germans, the Japanese, have torpedoes. They're incentivized to use those torpedoes as that finishing blow. This Dallas has decided he thinks he can finish me off. I'm under 4,000 HP. He's, he's right to be making the effort. I'm trying to dissuade him by reminding him, hey, I throw a lot more shells than you, and my shells hit harder. But he has a health advantage, um, so he's right to be making the attempt. I'm trying to dissuade him from this attempt. I am going to manage to hit him there. He's going to clip me for an overpin on the stern. I do a little more damage back to him. And, um, yeah. I'm going to get one more salad down range before we go around the hello. Hi. How you doing? Um, that's a bit of a tactical error. You should never have been spotted. You knew I was there. You knew I was there. I was well spotted by your teammate. And, um, yeah, that's going to cost you your ship, I'm afraid. Yep. Ain't no cockroach like a dead cockroach. All right, so I'm going to pause here. We're now down only one ship. Nine minutes to play. Let's talk about let's talk about the strategic situation. The other flank has basically folded, having accomplished very, very little. It's two on four over there. Whereas if I if the Perth and I try to push south down the seven eight line, we are going to be up against just this Dallas, and I feel pretty good that the two of us can take that guy. So. I'm going to get flipped around, and in a minute, you'll see in chat, I'm going, to, I'm going to go grab the Perth and say, look, buddy, we need to push. If we push south, we can probably start capping them out. It's going to end up being a cap race. We, we need to start capping before they do. If we can do that, we have a shot. Not a great shot, but a shot. Unfortunately for me, my Fuso, well, you'll see momentarily, but he's not... Um, I, we really need him to be awake, alive, and in the game, and I think he's actually stationary and disconnected or AFK or something. I don't know. Because then Omaha is not going to hold that back. And, um, yeah. With the Fuso gone on that flank, the, the fate of this game is basically over. But I'm not done yet because just in any game of Warships, never assume your opponent is going to make the smart decision, right? Always be playing for the win and and force your opponent to do the right thing, maybe he'll make a mistake. Maybe he'll screw up. Maybe these guys will decide to chase us. I don't know. I can't predict it, so I'm going to keep playing for the win. Yeah, they should help. We don't know where this Dallas is. I'm putting up my fighter to see if I can catch a glimpse of him somewhere. Perth has agreed to come with me, so the two of us are going to tag team um, tag team this cap, and hopefully we can get on it in time. There's, there's the Dallas right in front of the Perth. I'm desperately in vain trying to be a part of this engagement but mountainside says no perth is going to beat uh, beat this guy up just a little bit put some shells into him and force him to turn south now the beauty of this maneuver what once that happens he's going to be running from the perth and i'm going to have beautiful shots at him i'm still trying to get shells over this island in the hope the vain hope that i can can get them onto him here but nothing doing and now ordinarily you see where I talk about loading the AP? Okay, here's an example of a, an instance where you might not want to. Ordinarily, I'm looking for big citadels on this guy, right? But I don't know if you'd caught it. He's down to like three or 4,000 HP. He's very, very low. At this point, I'm running the risk of over-penetrating him with my shells. So I'm actually going to load the HE in the hopes that I can land enough shells for full pins or light a fire and just blow him up. Unfortunately, right there, I only get three on target. I shatter two on his armor. That probably would have been better as an AP salvo, but that's my thought process here. His guns are looking the other way. I'm not worried about getting shot at. He's focused on trying to shoot the Perth off to his starboard side. So, all right, there's my Kraken. We've had a solid little game, and now things are about to take a turn for the worse because right there, that's the submarine in our cap circle. And so I tell the Perth, look, um, get on this. You know, you're, you've got more health. You've got more options, more opportunity. I'll go back and see if I can deal with the submarine. The odds of it are bad, but let's try it anyway, especially since our last surviving ship on the top half of the board just bought it. 
Queen Elizabeth takes out the Omaha. It's like, well, let's, um, let's throw the dice and see what happens. For reasons I cannot explain, the opposing Königsberg has come back in the middle of the map. I guess he's trying to pick up that Perth but and get some shots on him, right? A smart, a smart play, really, but Perth is very, very stealthy for a mid-tier cruiser. I think 9.2 or 8.2, 8.6, something like this. Königsberg is never going to match that. And he's out here with me, and this guy is food for my guns, right? Again, another light cruiser, something that I can easily citadel if I can get the lead right. Oh, I'm waiting for my turrets to traverse. Oh, I'm waiting for my turrets to traverse. I don't want to get I don't want to give this guy free shots. Right? So I'm trying to time it so that I fire these shells right as I go behind the island and he loses sight of me. I managed to get the salvo out. Unfortunately, I assumed he was going to keep drifting drifting forward. He didn't. He had swapped into reverse, and so I got an overpin through his bow was all I got out of that salvo. Still, I'm going to pick him up in a minute as I come around the other side of the island and my guns are already looking for him. So, this this should be a very quick salvo. Let's see here. Yep, I'm going to lead him. I'm going to get the shells down range. He still hasn't gotten shells on me, by the way. Still hasn't managed it. There we go. A knight rewarded with another citadel. Again, I cannot quite seem to get enough shells through him to kill him. But we're going to do it here with this salvo. Now, unfortunately, uh, my teammates are all trying to, trying to win the game. His teammates are busy murdering me. <laughs> So that's the power of, of him getting the spot on me, right? And, uh, and the Kiwi getting a salvo in. And unfortunately, our play to try to win this game is going to be unsuccessful. But, however, right? I mean, let's have a look at the results. So, in the end, a nice, solid result from this game, right? A little over 100,000 damage. I killed half the enemy team. I've got a Kraken and a high caliber. Um, I think... Eve, despite the loss, I think you can see some of the some of the the strengths of this line, and that's really what I was trying to to, to display. So yeah, it's a losing game, but I think you can see why the ship might appeal and why you might enjoy it. I mean, I've got two people on my team in double digit experience. That Fuso, remember the guy that was way we're like, oh, Fuso better live twenty two XP. Yeah, I don't think he was present for most of the game. I'm the only person over 1,000. So, uh, in fact, let's see. What is that? Eight of the 12 of the team didn't even break 500. So, yeah, not exactly a team game here. That's how That's how I'm able to get six kills. <laughs> um, but, but the key things I want you to take away from this game, of course, are A, what you can do to opposing light cruisers. That is your primary target, you know. B, what you're able to do to battleships who disrespect your guns. You will not citadel most battleships. It can happen. It's incredibly rare. But you will be able to get lots of good full penetration damage against the, their casemate armor between the deck and the belt, right? And that will that will add up, right? You saw it on that Cavour. I was able to outduel a battleship who had when we started that off, he had four times my health pool to start the game to start that engagement at mid-range, almost close range, and I won. Dude by flexing superior maneuverability and the strengths of my ship. So yeah, a nice little solid game here. Um, I hope you enjoyed that little example of how you can play Pensacola and have good results in her. Let's duck back to the port for one last outro. All right, guys, there we go. There's our learn to play video for USS Pensacola tier six American heavy cruiser. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, like I said at the top of the video, I slept on these ships for a long time. If you have not tried the American Heavy Cruiser line, I really encourage you to give it a go. Pensacola and maybe even New Orleans will feel a little rocky. You will have some ups and downs in them. But the line comes together really nicely at Baltimore. And Des Moines at the top is remains one of the best Tier 10 cruisers in the game all these years later. She's a, well, she's a worthy addition to your port. The point is the end of the line is worth it even if you have to suffer through some pain to get there. So just trust me on this one, okay? In the meantime, guys, appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Be safe. I'll catch you next time.